I use the word divination, or direct revelation to the saints. I will now venture to talk about this. Uh, this understanding was given to me supernaturally. That is before I, I don't think I read this chapter. Um, only read the chapter and just never understood it. So that is what gave it to me when I was still a very young believer. And uh, the deep relief to some of our person question that is why God tell me here. You know, so what is the purpose of my, my life? That being said, I don't want to to see a lot to any effect. I want to highlight the word I understood. The spirit of Babylon, or the evil regime, spiritual regime of Babylon. Turn with me to 17 chapter for Revelation. Said in the beginning, said one of the seven angels by the seven bowls came to me, said, Come, I'll show you the punishment of the great prostitute. Now, that's a very interesting word. Prostitute is a one that is unfaithful, use of her whatever appeal to commit idolatry with uh, others. Some say the word, others translate called a harlot, you know, the great harlot. The great prostitute of the great harlot. And you can see through the Old Testament tradition, which is Revelation borrowed from, a prostitute of harlot always means an unfaithful people who covenant with God but depart from that covenant. So the word connotation there clearly saying this is not merely pagan people to begin with. Amen. Hallelujah. Pagans, they never worship God. They never have a common God. They're nothing to prostitute spiritually speaking or commonly speaking about. So this is God's people in a sense. <coughs> but hell officially had a covenant with God. But as Israel did, you can see the book of Hosea, God actually ordered Hosea to marry a prostitute projecting or prophesying a future. Amen? Hosea, the book, actually come to Christ, go to Egypt. So, to signify the desire of God to actually reconcile the people, even it being a prostitute. So, but this one was not necessarily even have the chance to be reconciled back to God. This one totally had taken hold by whom? But the deception, the evil one. So become a established representation of the devil in a sense. So a great prostitute who sits on many waters, with her, the king, the earth, commit idolatry, the habit of the earth, were toxicated by the one of her idolatry. Now we know that in the Reformation tradition, because of worship of Mary, the Queen of Heaven, the Catholic tradition continue to be, Martin Luther can call the, the Catholic as a Babylon, spiritual Babylon. So this interpretation of the spiritual Babylon, who this Prostate days has been shifting through the ages. Okay, so but it's a picture clearly identified. It's a religious establishment. It has a support of worldly powers. It is we're appealing to people who what who desire that we have a life that she should appeal to. So, 
you continue to look around this power, you will understand it is her some kind of beauty and some kind of richness, especially some kind of lifestyle promised to people. <coughs> through trading, through merchandising, through luxury, through richness of goods, amen, through a good life, basically. So that being said, is that not characteristic about many empire life through the ages? Mm -hmm. Amen. Romans, Amen. Romans, a Catholic, another tradition, in a certain way, and the British, France. What about today? Today, I don't think China is going to escape any on mission America. You know, so it's a way of a culture or it controls and rule the people. So if we expand it as more than a regional on this particular organizational construct, recognize it's a culture. It's a culture that take a hold of the people uh, the, the people's mind. Now let's turn to three. The angel carry me in the spirit into a desert. The word desert Definitely not suited for this queen. So why is the desert? It's interesting. It's in contrast to the 13th chapter of the same book of the woman being persecuted by the dragon go to the desert. But a desert in spiritual meaning is a word called the word for John as well. It means a, a spiritually desert place. A place no righteous air or sounds of God. <clears throat> will be produced. Is that making sense to you guys? But here's a woman is having a pretty city. And she dressed in many, you know, you can see the characteristic already yourself. But turn with me to the land of power, said a woman hold a golden cup in his hand, filled with abominable things and the fill of idolatry. So this is a title written on her forehead. Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes. Now, what do prostitutes really do? Actual mar marriage relationship, right? So, sexual appeal for sure. But basically, idolatry. So, the mother of prostitutes, that's interesting. So, who? <laughs> the mother is either garden. On the initiator. So, so, like God the Father, through Jesus Christ, He became the progenitor of a holy seed. Make it sense to you? The fatherhood is a source of our name, the Son's name. Hebrews do said, so derive all their name from the, his, the same fatherhood. Therefore, we are called the brothers. This is not seen to call our brothers. So is there is a false contract to mimic yet prostitute this concept of God's fatherhood. And that is through this uh, false motherhood. Does that make sense to you guys? So it produced worshippers or offsprings that embrace another way of a culture. I mean, not the wisdom. So, the abomination of the earth. I saw the woman was drunk with the blood of sins, the blood of those who were born testimony to the Lord. So, that is interesting. So, what? He actually is a drunk with the blood. Now, you have two ways to, to have blood in the were simple ways. <laughs> you can have sacrifice. You can kill somebody, sacrifice the blood. Or you can suck somebody's blood. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> so I don't know what the woman did, but he's drinking your blood. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pretty bad picture. I did not give you the picture, okay? I'm just giving the Bible. So. I think yeah. one of the keys mm -hmm. in the imagery, not just the imagery, but mm -hmm. early on, the Lord set blood apart 
and he said because uh, the life is in the, the blood. Life, the blood in the blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> so John was astonished, and the picture to see this great mystery that had been ruling the people of the <laughs> world through the ages, yet I uh, even come to his aware. Amen. Babylon here is a rich culture in the ancient times to symbolize, to symbolize a we construct the culture. Now let me ask you, what a Babylon culture is outstanding character, the ancient culture? For one, the people will rule themselves. They will build the empire based on their own strength. So people will be their own god, in a sense. Second, they are very good at what they call astrology, witchcraft, occultism. So to a point that our father Abraham had to walk away because they are famous stargazers, you know. So they use occult knowledge try to attain some demonic power obviously. So it's a, a source for all kind of um, unclean spiritual practices. If you know. And their source of power, wisdom, and operation was what? Well, from the demonic realm, am I right? The evil realm. The, then they tried to sustain this uh, big, big, big empire, think about it. So, interesting. So, what have you, it continues. The scripture here said, the angel actually said, why well, is astonished in seven? I explain to you the mystery of the woman and the beasts. We rise. What have you there? So, he's a woman, in a sense, a spiritual leader. And the beasts is a political arm. So the beasts which you saw once was is not to come up with this go to his destruction. And then talk about the people whose names are not written in the book of life will be where? Automatically in the book of death and destruction. That is very interesting. Yesterday I did some teaching talking about when we say the angels rejoice for, your, for, for, for to see these little ones, I identify the little ones as the, those whose names are written in heaven. The so angel rejoice, it's not because a young baby can baptize a young lad. Honor the Lord actually is a qualified, a true disciple, and being admitted to the heavenly realms to have their name <coughs> written in heaven, acknowledge and come and, and uh, declare in heaven. Hallelujah. So therefore the angel rejoice because another song come back. The same concept when Romans 8 speaking that all creation is groaning. But they re will rejoice when the Son of God has been set free, you know, become because he will be set free. Mm -hmm. So this is a whole concept that has an a hidden thread in the Bible, unfortunately, as seems to have always been consumed, consumed and not even openly discovered. But this is deep to do with what discipleship is about, what it means. This is when he said, angels rejoice to hear, to hear this one of these little ones, you know, come back, they say. And that being said, so if your name not in the heaven, Ah, where's your name? Mm. So I don't see this picture, basically, a picture of uh, an evangelism great number of people. I see it as a remnant concept, right? And practice. Very few will be saved. The Bible continue to tell this concept. Very few will be saved. Even the gospel is a preacher the end of the world. But very few be saved. And it now he said, This is called for one, for the mind with wisdom. Mm. 
So, it's in another place. If you look at, if you look at Noah, I mean, <laughs> but then, if you look at Noah, very few were saved in that time. And yeah. Isn't there, isn't there a correlation, or don't they say, that the end time Jesus said it would be like the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. like the days of Noah. So that's kind of a picture. Obviously, probably not, you know, six people or however many. Of them. <clears throat> well, it's representative of a righteous standard. That's what Noah's life mm -hmm. represented. Mm -hmm. Well, we obviously, as I more and more begin to study the premises, conclusions of Christianity of the church is especially with the Christianity. I found many fundamental constructs, propositions, but they did it wrong. It's commingled, even initiated by a humanistic point of view of human imaginations. They're contrary to the scriptures. Right? Contrary scriptures. And there are false prophet or spiritualist, whatever, has continued to lend themselves to a delusionary way of exercise spiritual gifts and use the Bible. Therefore, they will try to use the regions, ideas, or human passions, human imagination to replace the clear prophecies given the Bible by the Bible. And uh, interesting enough, this kind of tendency become a layer after layer after layers begin to blind man's mind. Even the reality of God, the reality that He has forewarned us about the world, is stare at the face. We're in the middle of it. We didn't think it's a faith. But we were not willing to acknowledge the contrast God intended to cause between His kingdom people. Amen? Hallelujah. And the world. Now, who is doing that job according to the Bible? It's the spirit of Babylon. <coughs> now, then other places I can't really find it. Talking about the spirit of Babylon, where the dwelling place is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, 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 a layer of a demon. Mm -hmm. okay? A gathering place demon. So demons is not as you think the lawless. The kingdom darkness one is not lawless darkness. Mm -hmm. Actually on the street order. So what is saying this is that the this like Holy Spirit and holy angels under a street garment, the whole holy God's God's garment, so is the demonic spirit under a regime, mm -hmm. under command. When men think the war power, humankind are uh, fighting with culture, ideologies, political strife, and, and, and actually the high influence, and, and actually the as um, instruments part of, instruments right, instruments lawlessness, instrument of the demons. The Bible clearly tells us that. Um, so how demon influence people, my point, is a through ideologies, through change mindsets. You know, Paul is a word called the strongholds. Come with me to to eleven chapter, I think, of Second Corinthians. I have a point to make, okay? Sir, what was the, what's the verse again? The second um, the ten chapter for Second Corinthians. He said in the beginning, I'm going to read it from here. I think I took some notes down to tell you guys to parse different party in the scriptures, am I right? There are apostolic ministry party, there's a church dividing two camps. One is the lessening and the honoring Paul's ministry, 
if the other rebelled against it, so in Catholic, the Catholic Church are two camps. The third is outsiders, outside, at least outside Paul's ministry, try to discredit his ministry, try to cause trouble, basically between his relations with the, with the church thereof. Does that make sense to you guys? So, yeah. Then you can say, conclude that somebody may be totally outside whatever going on with God as if it's, you know, the church in a sense. So, but look at Paul's per perspective. The such books, especially Paul's writing, John's writing, Peter's writing, has to be written, uh, comprehend from a point of apostle ministry. You can't read with a modern reformative construct of a pastoral. What are you going to do with the pastor, church, my pastor? You know, you can all, what are you going to do with our denomination? I'm not criticizing the people, they may do a good job and important for the congregation. But the lean's understanding of the scriptures will be distorted. Paul did not write anything for to serve that kind of flock. The constructs are different. Therefore, the leadership instruction are different. Therefore, the the divisions of responsibility are different. Make sense to you guys? Yeah. So, and therefore, also we need to recognize in apostle ministries, unlike the diary separation of a church leadership in modern day church, especially within the flock or the congregation and for the professional minister, basically. So that is not the case in the church Paul ministered to. Now the officers, there are different tiers, different venues of disciples, but the discipleship was a prevailing construct in his ministry, you know? It's, it's everyday life for them. Every teaching he taught is uh, not given to church leadership per se, but for what? For discipleship purposes. So there are different assignments in ministries. He disciples differently. Make sense to you? He relates them differently. And that is interesting. Is diminishing from our midst. We're given to professional, academic, uh, for training of leadership. Um, intellectually raise that people to know the Bible, to do a sermon, and uh, <laughs> do a sermon. <laughs> I teach you how to do a sermon. <laughs> and you can imagine, that means let me maneuver your mind or utilize your mind to use scripture as a content to produce a some kind of message. <laughs> A young student write an essay like that. Am I not? <laughs> they treat the, the book God really, really re, re, almost disregard the Holy Spirit leading and impartation to begin with. The propositions are wrong. Now, however, discipleship cannot be done like that. Discipleship has to be taught, led, and organized to flow by the Spirit. That being said, one of the job is to tear down, you know. The other job is to build up. So Paul said, I'm not here to tear you down, try to build it up. But in order to build it up, something, God will make room for it. Amen? Hallelujah. And so he was especially identified as a target object, this struggle in his ministry, his relationship with the people, in the mind of individual believers as something foundation. There's a foundation, like a layer foundation. You must tear the old foundation down, build up the new foundation. Now I want to borrow your imagination a little bit. Mm. Cast yourself to be a Greek minded person, maybe a UN a good scholar, a little philosopher maybe of the day. And you come to know Paul. You see on the teachings. And you have a lot construct in your mind. Adoration of your culture. Amen? Hallelujah. And we ought to use your mind intellectually to chart your course to 
to evaluate the world is about, right? To to decide your life vision. As Tim recently talked about the world view, to have your own world view. I'm not sure that's a good word, but you know, that's in mm. professor uh, philosophers, you know, those tell you have a world view. Now doesn't matter. Your your identity and your relation with the cosmos, with the humankind in it with everything then in it. So how you decide, remember that relationship, you can see a young man full of imagination, idea, and Paul said, let's tear that down, basically. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's undo that. So the first course in church was the most Greek thinking, am I? They're not necessarily Jews, or maybe partial Jews. Jews, and Paul just said, well, I don't know. I don't want to give you signs wonders. No more signs wonder for you. Christ already came, and He crucified. It's the biggest sign you ever had as a Jew. You should know that. And He already raised up from the dead. I testified to that. What other sign you want me to tell you? So, and He sent us, in particular, to teach you His teachings. You know, this is a teacher, a right teacher, he has long prophesied in the book of Moses, prophesied through the ages. And you, your people have been crying for the Messiah to come, and he has finally come. And you still ask for signs, wonders, and we're not going to give to you. So, but what we want to give to you is a matured wisdom inside how the kingdom operates, how the people are supposed to be. Am I? To build a culture of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. But we can see the two sides of blinders. I mean, that's, I think, brother Justin can touch a little bit. <clears throat> but it points to come from those minds, mindsets. Now, in here, in this chapter, in this portion of the scriptures, Paul speak about how he confronted as a uh, very peculiar mission entrusted to whom? Not to everyone, but to a particular team that is a possibly teaching company, if you will, a custom ministry company. So in the beginning, he said, By the making of gentleness Christ appeal to you, I, Paul, am timid when face to face with you, but the boat went away. Well, that's the character of godly people. Also, if you are the target of grace, the target of ministry, they will try to sympathize with you, considerate about you. They don't put it, you know, they try to involve your life in every way they can. To a Jew, they will be a Jew. To a Gentile, they will be a Gentile. So that they have saved some. So they have a long, suffering, long patience. But is that the ultimate purpose? In sonship, there's no Jew, no Gentile. So where Paul started with them in relation to talking about things, Jew or Gentiles, is this a purpose? Is that stay with what they are, where they are? Or he bring them where he want them to be? That is to know them and let them know God as a son of God, am I? As a son of God. And that make sense to you guys? That is the purpose ministry. So that required this undoing, a tearing down, the, to sanctify them, to bring their mind to a new place, renew their mind, transform their thinking. So the purpose to have a relation with them is to build a friendship. Look at this, they can do this with them. If this is not carrying out or being practiced, do you think Paul has any interest in that relationship? He could walk away from his own family, hmm. walk away from his own people. Do you think he can waste his life on those people? That's never Jesus' uh, commission, am I? He tell disciples for the people that will receive them, amen? Receive them 
and not rejecting them. Yeah? And actually tell them, be very careful, be adamant in insisting on the culture that you carry that not be diluted away, not be challenged away. Hallelujah. Well, I want to give you a warning. In the day to come, you will be challenged. By whom? By religious people. That's the war you must win. And all cost. And all cost. There is no party. You must force ahead. There is no party. If we are called by God, if we have a truly a ban in our hand, we're meant to cut through something. Well, you must cut through the fortified walls, the religious mindsets. On the Babylon, the two arms is a strength in modern Christianity. Religious construct through indoctrination, religious teaching. Familiar family contracts through familiar relationships back up by their understanding of the scriptures. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, if you look at Jesus, look at Paul, look at Peter, the early apostle, they have to cut overcome this thick wall. They each one did it themselves. But, hey, Young people, you want to build a real foundation? That's where you start. The foundation is not maybe what other Christians, even good hard Christians, tell you what your life can be like. It shall not be. Especially in the world ahead, you can be used by God. You shall not propagate or promulgate what I word, an idea, idolize life under the influence of Babylonian spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, I'm not telling you to not see, not to fulfill your life destiny. No, God will help you to do what needs to be done. But to pursue it under the, infer, the inference, and then the governance, if you will, the reign, the role of a wrong culture, that is not going to work for God, for your relation with God. And unfortunately, I think there are very unwise people in doctrine, see deeply in religious con concept, try to impose that idea on our people and the young people. You're going to have to take a fight. You're going to cut the cord. It's going to cost you. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Paul said, I'm be very bold when I'm away. Why is it bold? In the middle of it, he tried to stay with them, to be patient with them. But no matter we have a lot of time to think about the struggle, think about the word they're heading, think about the word involved them. He was not settled. So he will continue to send Timothy, others, later like this, to give them warnings, you know, give them a warning to, for them to move ahead with the purpose of God. So I beg you, and Paul begging, interesting, I beg you that I come, I may not have to be bold, as bold as beg to be towards some people who think that we live by standard of this world. Is that not our trouble? Is that not our trouble? Amen? Hallelujah. While we worship God, enjoy the gifts, the teaching of the Holy Spirit, but the foundation we build, informed by certain type of personality, is continuing to say, these people are just another member of this world. Let me manage them. Let me relate to them in such a light, shamelessly. 
in the name God. That must be put a stop. For the young people have the freedom, the audacity to rise up to be a spiritual people. We can't continue to feed them to this false altar and regime a distortion and misrepresentation. And I hope every adult in our midst will have a holy response for your young, young soul that reads up and care for will treat them as a treasure in God's house, build a relationship on solid spiritual foundations, spiritual purposes, spiritual templates, have friendship, have relationship, be spiritually approved, spiritual device, spiritually engaged rather than continue have the world to come you to lay out how you do relationships and the shame would be and the shame if after decades of the decades we struggle try to walk away ourselves then we face the young people future then let them do the things that we try to walk away we have filled God miserably. That's not going to happen under your watch. So I give you a holy charge today. It should not happen. And let me give you a first warning. If you allow it to happen, everything you have in God gained will be lost. God will not be happy about it. And anyone, let me be clear, God has given us so much favor, so much intentionality, so much miraculous, meticulous dealings with us. For what? I hope. You guys don't envision for somebody's idea of the earth, think what we should be. Amen. You give us a word clear instruction what kind of people we need to, need to be and call to be. That is a, something is a non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Amen. Hallelujah. This, you know, query every heart. Is that negotiable for you, brother? Non-negotiable. And is it going to be negotiable for you? So be bold to forge ahead and say, that's not negotiable. The door, the gate is a set. I mean, it's shot to certain kind of ideas, inferences, and ways. Amen. Amen. We must take on this charge. Well, why? I can see in my front. Right now, you have two altars to go. Two temples to go. And sometimes the vision was given to me because there's a, there's a line in the sand. Of the throne, room of God, the throne of God, and there was the deceptive ways. I think there's another vision speaking about Nibetin, is there? The, the, the golden, golden stature or something like that, sir? Mm -hmm. Was not happy with the temp the, 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 the border template gone, whatever template gone. Interesting how the devil can taunt you, mislead you, and bring deception to you. It's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. It, once we learn to compromise, we'll continue to compromise. That to a point, things become very much unsalvageable. So we must learn to not entertain the spirit of compromise. Mm. God's sense, leadership, must not compromise with evil. Mm. Must not commingle 
Where's the falsity? It's a spirit thing. It's a spirit of the world or spirit of God. Everything else is a small play. It's a, it's a baby tricks. You need to find what the spirit a man is operating under. Mm -hmm. What a spirit a ministry is operating under. What a spirit so-called prophetic gifts or voices is speaking to. Are they speaking to the world? Or speaking God's people? Are the audience why? Or audience try to garner some favor, inferences among the many who are deluded, who are tickled the ear. This must be a choice. Hallelujah, must be a choice. Someone won't be a prophet. A prophet is to be misunderstood and persecuted. Lonely, most importantly. You might have to bear out the burden and not complain. Amen? Because it's not about you. You're just being selected, the honor to be one carry his burden, his purpose. You are mouth peace for him. I don't think Jeremiah said a curse that I when I was born. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be born into the world. Well, that's my sentiment many times. Amen? Hallelujah. But I'm not saying I'm a prophet. I'm talking about understand the struggle of the inner man. You want to be a prophet? Go through that. Then tell me a prophet. Amen? I don't care how gifted you are. It's a nonsense to me in the end of the day. The world moves on. The kingdom always stands. The God will wrap everything up. So you're not adding too much to me. Hallelujah. But I want you to be the solid partner in the principled ways, character ways of God. God's ministry. Amen? Hallelujah. That's when you become a truly bold. Truly bold. Hallelujah. So, Paul was bold. Very bold. I mean, can you imagine he come to uh, some unfearable cities, finally found the small group people welcome him, and they can challenge them, dash them, confront them, Unhappy with them, even terrified them. Say, hey, I hold a rod, you know. <laughs> Be careful when I come. Not appeasing him, right? Not the seeker friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because it's a message cut to the quick to the hearts of those who follow him and believe the message. He is confident. With the internal wisdom that will give him for him to minister. Amen. Hallelujah. We have the word of God, therefore we are very bold, Paul and the place said. Our confidence not come from ourselves, but it come from whom? From God. It's something I think is lost in most of Christian mind, especially ministers. They're bold with many things. They're noisy about many things. But they can't tell me whether God sent them or not. Or they die to themselves now. Does the reason lose everything or not? Yeah. The likes and dislikes whether on social media is a serious or poor parameter of whether you are a good minister or not. If you stand before the Holy God, you will not do that. Mm -hmm. You actually will not show up yourself from those to those places. The Bible warns us, the more welcome in the eyes of man, the more dangerous it is. But I think we have a culture continuing to encourage young people to be somebody in the world. What it mean to be somebody in the world when you are sufficient, most privileged to be a son in the house of the Lord? If you truly are, no one will pray for us.
Father, I pray that we would walk on this path that you have set before us to find our identity in you through the, the people that you have placed in our lives, divinely appointed to more than influence our character and personality, Lord, but direct the destiny of our hearts, Lord, which only your hand can do, and to find this identity in our relationship with you, Father, as we, Lord, desire to know the desires of your heart, and Lord, as we um, grow in this life, Lord, being in this world but not of it and its ways, Lord, this, Lord, this delineation between your ways and the ways of this world will be more and more emphasized and clear to us. So, Father, as was encouraged and admonished earlier, may we, Lord, never seek to mingle with these ways or compromise with them, but continue on in a, a steady course, Lord, to the fulfillment and realization of your purposes, Lord, which is that which inspires our hearts above any other thing. Lord, I even feel strongly this responsibility for the rising generation, or to keep any such mingling or compromise from happening, or not merely for the sake of what I have in you, or which is, of course, dear to me, Lord, but for the sake of this generation and your purpose in it, Lord, I pray that in my life and in each one of our lives that feel the same sense of duty, uh, Lord, that this burden would, uh, rather than dismay us, Lord, move us to action, Lord, to be effective and usable members of your house as kings of an order that is not of this world, or it has nothing to do with this world while it is, Lord, perhaps it does, in fact, Lord, for it is going to bring change, Lord, to the minds and hearts of men, Lord, but it does not use their ways and methods of doing so. And so, Lord, I, I do ask for your uh, divine protection over each life, Lord, that you would continue to open our eyes to things that are unknown to us, that need to be seen by us. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. You guys are doing good. Young people, be encouraged. Your heart, your wish in the right place. Everything take a process. I definitely not on this occasion want to add a false burden to you, rather encourage you. Hallelujah. Continue be mindful of the infiltration and the spirit of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Forge ahead for the benefit and the grace God gives to you in everyday life. Especially with the relationship God gives to you. Your parents are godly parents. Your teacher are godly teachers. Hopefully, like I can all see, we as a leadership is godly leadership to you. I want you guys to be godly people, godly generation, which is supposed to be. This message is for safeguarding, hallelujah, for some kind of understanding. There are Things we can entertain and give patience to that thing we can't. Amen. Paul was a very untolerant certain things in the midst of culture and church for a good reason because he knows the value and the importance of things one in part of them. What make them strong? What make them rich? What make them free? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We need them solid in God. He wants to build that up in their lives. Waste no time. And allow them to waste no time. 
and unfortunately, that's not is not always a kind of encouragement, an engagement from a good quote. Let me say, nominal Christian, nominal, never have a firmer grip what God is really doing in our day in this hour. They can't recon it. It terrifies the souls. It's a terror to them. It's deluded. Cannot see reality. Refuse to see the bottom. Bottom line, right? See? But you can't do that with God. God is God of truth. God is God of reality. He's not in the business to satisfy our wind. Or wish was his thoughts, which was his desires. It's not to take all our air. We are in a very dangerous time, mm -hmm. spiritually speaking. The spirit of Babylon wrongs the world, wrongs every nation. According to the Bible. And according, if you have this sermon, reality. So in that context, what kind of people of God as a remedy will be? What the foundation will build that we can, yeah, build upon this, build upon this. My son's daughter, build upon this. Don't move the foundation. Hallelujah. The God, I was talking to John the bit. He hid the people move boundary line. In just balance. I don't want young people to learn that. Mm. Amen? Hallelujah. It may cost me. Maybe I make a mistake. But they will come to learn there are solid things in, in life. It's not to be moved. Amen? Hallelujah. They are God-given boundaries. It must be respected. And we have a principled way to go about it with a clean conscience. Amen? Hallelujah. Clean conscience. Let's look on Paul's situation here. He said, we do not, though we live in the world, we don't war as the world does. The war is here translated in English as a war. But it's a fight. And then it's a fight. It's an engagement, like a wrestling game. In other places, we don't wrestle like the word people wrestle, in Ephesians speaking. You wrestle with what? With the mindsets. Mindsets behind the personalities, different person, for sure. The, the weapon we fight are not the weapons of the world. Ah, if not the weapon of the world, what are the weapons of the world? Let's give a ray in the sense of uh, Dealing with ideologies, different opinions, different ideas, different gods, quote unquote. Okay, maybe they know it or not. The God atheism. What does God atheism look like? I'm of our own God. <laughs> I'm smart enough to figure things out. <laughs> I don't need a God to help me figure it out. <laughs> So it's a self. <laughs> so don't recognize it. It's a pride in self. Oh, they so maybe endorse uh, another teacher. So who knows that guy? <laughs> I'm just give you some uh, parameters for you to figure out what the word of people is fighting in everyday life. I mean, social media, internet, TV, whatever. The pundits, the good word, pundits, many ideologies of political interests. What are you really doing? So you can see the doing is use arguments, what we call today called even lies, right? Lie against the fact, lie against the truth, called the pretension. To major ways, Paul identified the human mind deceived itself. 
and lend itself to be instrumental for a spirit of the world, a spirit of lawlessness. But refuse, as the teacher said, refuse to die to that way. Refuse to die to this way of carrying on your life. So Paul said, no, on the contrary, their weapons. What weapon? Discipleship. Apostolic teaching, that's a weapon. <laughs> to restore some ancient foundations through relational and divine uh, order. I and mean, in divine relation, divine order in these kinds of people. That's what they did. It. It's amazing that, yeah. that, you know, there's a huge majority of Christianity that would read this scripture and think, oh, yeah, that's right, our weapons are not guns and swords and knives and bombs it's arguments again okay. uh, <laughs> but see what that but they're spiritual so that's the only yeah. distinction that's made yeah. and what that does is it it lays a hidden covering mm. over psychological warfare yes witchcraft, witchcraft. propaganda yes and subtle training of the yeah. mind, yes. which has been done, you know, and, and there have been those in recent history who have made it very evident that that was the exact intent they had. Those like, I, th I don't know if this is the right name or not, but I think like Aleister Crowley who said, we're, we're going to educate in such a way so as to manipulate people's minds to think oh. in a certain way. Well, that is a guy of the and and so or we okay. yeah okay. But I mean, these are the these are the initiation yeah. and the maintenance and training of minds yeah. as a means yeah. of warfare. Yeah, it's a whole different type of warfare. So when Paul here, and and that was not. That knew even at his time because of the, the rise wow. of the Greco Roman Empire, mm -hmm. which was such a high minded yes. empire. It, yeah. its, its main forte mm -hmm. was to be able to control the way that people think about who they are yes. and what the empire is doing. Yes. Yes. So, you know, what I don't know what the, the, the adage is, Justin probably does, but Rome ruled with an iron fist, but Greece. Rule with the ways of the mind. The mind, yeah. you know, the, the yeah. high intellect. Yes, yes, yes. And so, you know, when Paul, even in that context, mm -hmm. is saying he's not talking about swords and knives. No. He's talking about the methodology that exists within the context of human existence yes. to try and control or manipulate mm -hmm. the minds of men. Absolutely. That's why so sad. The to hear his facts, like our brother in prison training up in mm. classic training, right? What is class training in the British tradition? Greek, Latin, whatever. Mm. So literally, they require young people, especially ruling class, like school at Eden, in Oxford, and also pay a lot of stuff in the Greek thinking. So everyone gradually can see the can speak very well. They can make argument in in, mm -hmm. the, in their parliament very well. But at the end of the day, ask them, what are you going to say? Not too much. Mm -hmm. What are you really proposing? Don't really know. And, and what's your standard? What are your region? Not sure. But they will carry such elaborated meandering speeches you will be intimidated by their oratory ori, 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 ori skills yes oh by the way this is how back in the oratory skill be careful learn from the right ones learn like lincoln right like someone have a solid ideas don't use your mouth to overcome people don't do trickery to outsmart people you always in the body. I have learned life enough, know a lot of people enough, to know history enough, to know those who play tricks. 
you know, the way you use a sword, you can be caught. You know, the second thing is you, I think the English is saying called if you have a hammer, you can everywhere find the new edge. <laughs> you can know everything. The people with that kind of mindset, they always need to argue with you. They're going to argue to everybody. They had to win argument. To prove they are smarter or lighter than you, or more right than you. That is a sickness to the core, to the soul. Amen? Because that mind never have a true settlement in life. Can't even settle with himself. Now, that is a symptom, not settle with God. Am I making sense to you guys? You know, not settle with God. But, um, Truly enlightened, disciplined, and mature believer must have a relation with God and peaceful, right? Peace and peace. So, and have peace with a fellow human being. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm not interested in gaining or losing the same. I'm interested in how a relation with you, but our relation doesn't work it out. Well, I'm free to forego it. Amen? Hallelujah. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. Uh, other, any other endeavor is a tool, is a stage for me to do that. Hallelujah. But that is a fundamental, a different way of life. That is Jesus Christ and, and others try to, the, I think that every Christian is supposed to do that, am I right? So, however, that's a rarity in, in the Christian world. And we need to restore that, that purity, that freedom, that different way of doing life and processing life. Now, let's go on. So on the contrary, they have a divine power to demolish strongholds. Now, if you engage in active argument, what have you, that is already game on, right? So, but stronghold is something that what? You occupy somebody, there will be a strong man behind the stronghold. So, stronghold <laughs> is a man's mind, basically, that are unenlightened, undisciplined in the eyes of the Lord. We demolish. Oh, wow. What are you? Hmm. We demolish. The picture I can give to you in the Old Testament. It was a Jebusite taking hold of the stronghold, Jerusalem. Very important prophetic picture. Where God temple is supposed to be set up, right? His ark is supposed to go, right? So, his priesthood is supposed to serve. The cultural center is supposed to be erected. And there are Jebusites occupied and taunting David. Hey, <laughs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> and, uh, it? And David took it. You know, took it. The last stronghold, I think, in the land of these lights these days is that stronghold and finally God gave to David to conquer it he didn't do any well by the way that stronghold is uh, secured by Abraham can you believe that? so that was uh, supposed to be the number one place you conquer if you have a people of God I mean <laughs> think about your forefathers is that interesting? but no it delayed for a long long time until David showed up, you know, David showed up. So what the picture there? You can look at Joshua when he entered the land, he actually tried to do something about it, then they lost it again. So, so what this is picture is about is about Paul understand how to build a temple. Every believer is supposed to be what? You are don't you know you are temple of the Lord? The kingdom of God is going to set you free, and He must to tear down your strongholds, to erect the temple of God, to build the temple, build the foundation of a new dwelling place for God in your life. But He has the stronghold resisting the work of the Lord. And Paul, if you are a believer, if we decide to disciple, the targeted ministry in a sense. They said, what this one going to do? I'm going to tear that down for you. I'm going to conquer for you. So, you can't do it yourself. 
the support. Again, we, right? We, then you. There are two companies here. One is we. We, why? Because we, one carries a positive ministry, carry positive grace. That's what the Paul speaking in other place on the, the administration of God's grace. I mean, he's talking the administration of God. That's what I do. <laughs> I, he has identified himself as the three titles or three offices for God. I'm a teacher, I'm a herald. What the herald do? Hey, the kingdom is coming. <laughs> the king is coming. And the herald for the kingdom of God. Then an apostle. He never give up his teaching ability. Teaching, teaching. And uh, that is one of the outstanding gifts of Paul. Because he was able to teach the Bible, Old Testament, in a different way. That even Peter and other apostles admire him that gift, you know, in that revelation. And he had that and the talent to do that. Make sense to you? And Peter recommended his teachings. So, when, however, Paul does not do theological argument or theological presentation, he is facing a living audience and said, I can do something about your mind. <laughs> That's his ministry. That, that is a, a, the, the working out of the grace God given to me, the, the ministry God's grace. You know, so, and let me get some to you guys. And that business is to do is to demolish arguments and every pretension that set itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take out to every thought to make it obedient to the anointed one. To the anointed, if you will. To the anointed one. That is a certain way of thinking. Means a certain way of the mind, the heart, being unified under the work of the Holy Spirit to process your mind, process your thoughts differently. And the anointing will teach you all things. That is the same target there. Think about it. But we have the mind of Christ. We think like Christ would think. Amen? The anointing one manifests in the person of Jesus Christ. The word become flesh. It produces certain kind of mindset. Certain kind of way of doing life, thinking about things, judging what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is evil, under, I mean, and with, and of the ministry of the seven spirits of God. Isaiah 11 speaks of this. I, I can talk more about this. But the importance to recognize that when you're I have become a solid discipleship in the apostle ministry, under the teaching of apostle ministry. Your mind change, <laughs> opinion change, a fair game. It's a part of the deal. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the teacher under that regime come to you and say, let me change your mind, let me change your opinion, let, let me demolish some things that I think is wrong about. He's not to criticize you. He's to try to build you up. Amen? Build you up. Until those things are dealt away. Dig it out. Dealt it away. He can't build anything new with you. So there, to everything there is a season. <clears throat> to everything there is a season. Amen? Hallelujah. And I hope our young people and, and uh, continue effort in our miss education efforts especially. I, we don't build old foundations <laughs> into young minds, am I? Into young, young things, uh, young ones relationships especially. The reason is the world is, a, is a very, very much is a pressure cooker. And what the pressure cooker is right now we're talking about. If we cannot stand up for them to make an expanded realm for the young people feel safe, to thrive in the Lord, which is I'm disappointed with certain character in our life. That destroy this. They have no idea what they're doing. No awareness of what they're doing. And they don't understand the, the inference, the, the, the way they go about things that they destroy the young one's life. And no awareness 
It's blind almost. Ignorant. It's, it's, you know, we try to cut the difference. We try to have help. But at the point, I can't be quiet doing it anymore. It comes to time, it's so dangerous. So dangerous. It comes to time, our young people grow up, they're seeking for answers. They're seeking for consolidated, I mean, unified agreement from the ones they look up to, the parents, the teachers, am I right? They unify the front. We can merely talk about it and don't give them a certainty that we are doing the right thing. We're not going to propose only to them. Have you figured out we are doing the right thing? It's good for them to figure out. But we must say, no, God is helping us. We are endeavored to do the right thing. And you must search that out first. Rather keep the burden to the young people, to the young ones, not yet fully developed in their discernment, understanding. Said, okay, maybe I can figure this out myself. A certain voices outside said, try to discredit unified cons console <coughs> and vision we have. That was from the devil. By nature, from the devil. By nature, anti-Christ. Because the Christ, Spirit Christ, is giving us word clear, pinpointed, entrusted. It's a heavy duty, I told you. We can't afford for other kind of opinion ideas that, no, 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 that's not a God. That's negotiable. Whereas, hallelujah, we're Oh, we try to agree together. You are doing your own thing. You lock yourself in the eternal vision. You are speaking to your echo chambers. Who is speaking in the echo chambers mind? When some have the direct communication with God. From different world, different seasons, different realms. God miraculously. Carefully and arrange your life to group together for a secure place for especially young people. And then they have no regard for that, no curiosity about that. My question is that if you don't know about that, what opinion you can offer that is should enjoy a serious hearing from me? I can't. Because obviously, you don't know anything. You don't even want to know anything. You know, that is not going to continue with a burden that we should carry our leadership as if we had to go through them. No, let's change the table. They must go through us. Do you understand that? All your parents, he must rise up to fight this fight. Because if not, your children, all the former effort, will be scattered. We must raise up the banner and don't retreat on this point. You can, when I was having a casual conversation with John, not a casual per se, but asking John for a certain input, John would say, do not touch the ark. Nobody, nobody should touch the ark in our midst about the vision of the Lord. We did not give up things, move around across the states for nothing. Amen? Hallelujah. That vision, that passion, that assignment by the Lord must be agreed upon before we talk about further spiritual relationships. Amen? It becomes this community, part of this community. It must be agreed upon. That's the standard you walk under. And that's the narrow door you must go through, if you will. 
Amen. Hallelujah. And anything, don't do this. I have any reason. I have the right to be reserved. <laughs> and I have the right to be suspicious when you refuse to do the things. What spirit you love? What, who sent you? What are you doing? We are in a very dangerous battle. Amen. Hallelujah. We face in relentless assault, opposition in the spirit. And here we need solid support. Amen. But we are not unaware of the evil one's schemes either. Mm. Hallelujah. There are point we must recognize who each person is in the Lord mm. and work from that point. If we refuse to acknowledge that, to search that out, what we can build together, what agreement we can even forge, that is the way the world does things. That's the way the world. That's not God. I'm telling you, we must set a different example for young people to forge ahead. Until this boundary line laid, there is no safety for them. They can't build. They don't know what they're doing. Amen? The world is still it's, it's a cesspool and some Babylon for them. And they have no idea God is building His invisible temple in our midst to erect a different order for His culture. We have the art of the Lord in our midst. We must shoulder in the, in the moving and serve before the, in the stationing. He must be the center of everything we do. Amen. Hallelujah. And the center should be conditioned our us as a spiritual leadership. Consequently, it will condition everyone, every member in our midst. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, I don't know how to explain to you. I share some things. It's a mystery. It's a, it's a spiritual success mystery. Okay? Mm. You go to the ark. Why God set the temple on the temple mount? Why the ark sent in a very particular sign place and never to be moved? Because everybody knows where to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody know where to go. Why God said set up the banner? Everybody know where to get there. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if we're not called for it, God forbid, we went on the voice. Let us follow. Let's find where God wants to get there. But if God give us some uh, assignment, okay, then right? So what option we have? Yes, you're definitely going to face misunderstanding, in false accusation, you're prideful, you think you're somebody. That's understandable. Understand, you're ignorant. You don't go through God, that's okay. You know? May God get through you. That's good for you. <laughs> so, if not, none of my business. Not have a ding on me. Amen? Hallelujah. But I'm curious about the ones who won't come, you know, come and get together. We will sort them out. We will do everything for them in order for them to have found the right place to tabernacle with us. <laughs> tabernacle with us. That's our passion and joy. Now, in our delineation this order, we're not talking about merely the proper or one generation. We're talking about the generational refounding, if you will, of a culture foundation. That's a struggle we must take on. We are forming a new people. Did you get my point? A new people. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And the young people must aware, must be aware. They are in a new spiritual land, yeah. on a new spiritual regime, mm. with a new spiritual leadership. Charge and establish in least one a new spiritual vision. Amen. It's a new, it's a new. It must 
understands and knew has not given before for the past generation, past ages. Now, some said, are you so arrogant? My point is, is that not the prophecy have been prophesying? The Christ since before our generation be crying? Mm -hmm. Has not God told us we are to fulfill that yeah. cry? So when we come aboard to declare we are doing something new, is that arrogant or obedient? That, that question must be answered concretely. As you don't want to hear everybody say, oh, you say you, say you are arrogant? Oh my God, I will have a lot of reasons about you. <laughs> because obviously you didn't hear God. You don't know us. Obviously. But if you say that God is doing something new, you may not understand it, you know, but it's something new, and you know God is doing something new, and the opposite of the contract and the show, the old will fade away. The new will be revealed coming. Now, how to get it done? I propose to you through teachings, through some kind of caliber of teachings. Amen? Not informational teachings. But instructional teaching, instructional teaching, the diff different tenures of teaching, right? For different purposes. So on the Temple Mount, you go through the Easter Gate. Amen? Hallelujah. You know the route. Amen? Jesus Christ, you know the parable. You, you know, at my sheep go up, go to the right gate, man. The shepherd goes to the right gate. So, those are things fundamentally true in Old Testament, New Testament, talking about a certain way to map up a spiritual order in God's house. Spiritual order in God's house. And in our midst required construction. Construction. We're not there yet. Amen. Hallelujah. We're building up. Uh, many years ago, said, why you don't talk about this? Many years ago, we don't have such clarity and unction yet. We're not there yet, <laughs> ourselves, as a leadership. But in this season, I think we are there. We are there. And ahead of us is the people before us. I think if I can boldly say the claim, we all have shortcomings, concerns, burdens, worries of life. But they are minute concerning this glorious entrustment God gave to us mm. as the chosen people. God can give up everything. He can choose anybody. But He chose us. And He give us maybe hardships. Not a lot of resources, freedom, the ability to move about. I'm merely speaking from a personal point of view. I have a personal condition to understand that. But about us, for the reason, for the reason to, to what is called forge you in the in the crucible, in his work, workshop, to forge you to be a hidden sword, as a people, to be a hidden sword. But you must be forced, amen. That's a very difficult process. Uh, you guys will inform of the process of forging the sword, am I? We're difficult. Hey, you don't want to use any iron or steel for forging the sword. Mm -hmm. You want the best. You want the best. And I believe many a heart here is the best. I want to give encouragement. But for the best, or much is a given, much is a required. Yes. God will be straightforward with you. He'll be solid with you. And He will not beat the bushes with you. He's not going to let you continue to play childish or youthful games. <laughs> he wants you to mature. And for the good reason, for you to mature. Amen. Hallelujah. It, but what is the devil going to do? He's going to taunt you, distract you, oppress you, sometimes to try to intimidate you. What the word? Intimidate. Well, here we go. We are not to be intimidated. 
<laughs> Let me see what you can do. Not arrogantly to see that, but it's nothing for us to lose. No man, nothing for us to lose if we have God. And God's vision and God's resourcefulness, God's giving hearts, which is a unique gift, will always forge ahead. Hallelujah. Will never, never be beat down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I want somebody to pray for us. Just in one you pray for us. I give you some encouragement. But also, give you some clarion call. We are in a very, very challenging time in the world. We're challenging in the body of Christ. Mm. As recently I heard, I'm bad news one of another about denominational churches. You know, denominations. As falling apart, confused, lost, almost lost their head, and chicken with that head. And, and uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's a sad story. But what about us? Are those bad news going to impact us? I hope not. It does impact me, make me sad and grieved and sometimes angry. Angry. But those are beautiful people, many people. I mean, many love the Lord, am I? Dear is one serve the Lord. Yet they're stuck in this regime of, of organization or teachings. They same cannot get over it. And this is a sunken ship. Every unit was sunk. And church entity in the Western world, maybe now Europe, Europe has given up, so give up on Europe. In this nation, has been the source of many evil strifes in the, in the national life. But we don't have a simple reckoning that we are responsible. Amen. There is no repentance, but justification. A more agitated, aggressive, a mocking, everything. Everything even God. Fundamentals God. Fundamental principles God. Love, mutual respect, give patience, sacrificially looking at others. Amen. Take care of others' interests before yourself. It's something to be laughed at. Amen. You know, like, oh, that's a weak guy, man. You know, then trample on him. No, those are people who are truly strong. Amen. They are truly strong because they are principled people. The people are not going to give up on the things of God. Amen? Alleluia. People choose to walk away from things. Be quiet things. Those are things that actually people have courage to be silent in a wicked world. In a noisy, evil, speeching world. I hope you understand where I came from. You look at the history. History repeats itself. There are always a time uh, like our time, that leading to great confusion and destruction to the nation, to humanity, especially youth. To youth. That's where my burden came from. That what about the young generation that are on our care? We can't allow those evil deluge to sweep them over and carry them away. That is not preservation per se, but the preparation, preparation, hallelujah, preparation. And I hope some sharing like mine today with intensity of day and witness will wake us up and rejoice, encourage, fortified as a unified front to be a 
a modern refuge, a, a beautiful flourishing garden, a Eden for our young people. Mm -hmm. We must do it. We must do it. Time is running out. Time is running out. We can't allow people to drag us to another cycle of chaos and foolishness. Hallelujah. Five. We demolish argument, every pretension, set us up against the knowledge of God, and we take out every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Uh, no common meaning, maybe working for certain people. But uh, most of the time, I think we were young believers, especially, like the state where the Corinthian church is. We need somebody to really straight us up, right? So to lay a good foundation in our life. And what they were to do, they demolish the old foundation. They demolish strongholds, actually. Now, hallelujah, the strongholds. So I'm not going to surrey and argue every case about what you think about American is for you, the <laughs> Americans, <laughs> or what you think the church is. It, it eventually doesn't matter. But I think it should be is that you lay that all aside for a while. And look at what God wants to be. Are you a son? Are you living out his kingdom reality and the season and the grace is signed for your help? Are you taking care of the given relation by him clearly to your life and make it priority of it? You must prioritize your relationship. That's not people in the action per se. That's God, how so it works. Mm. Amen. You love young lady, you love people. You will prioritize your time for that young lady. That's where your heart goes. Amen, Hallelujah. you can't help. So if you love God, you'll prioritize your divine relationships. That's, you can't help. You can't help. Let me say something, okay? If somebody has to condition you, to scare you, to pressure you, you are already lost in that battle. You're already lost. I don't ever think in my life as I walk with God, I don't seek the wise have something from the Lord for me in priority. It's just impossible for me. I can't sleep. I can't rest. So if you hunt something that it takes that passion that 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 what that away from you is most likely because some compromising voices, interests, character, ideas has come in stolen from you. The stole from you. How do you think the Babylon is called a prostitute. Appeal to people some desires on that Then on that score, on that word thing, we must repent. Amen? We must repent. You have a hook. You must cut off that hook. Amen? Hallelujah. And that word place, you must be a Word strong words to say no. Learn to say no. Amen. And learn to see God's gentle, kind, patient voice, loving voice. Say yes and cling unto Him so He don't go. There's a song in the old hands. May the Lord what well, don't don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. I love that song. The more you know the Lord, the more you want Him to not pass you by. The more you know that your relationship with Him is the most treasured thing to be not trifled with. I mean, we all grieve the Spirit. But the continual basis of grief with the Holy Spirit is a sin. That's however is a Christianity as today we have. We don't really care, respect, and listen to the Holy Spirit. 
and treat as a norm. But it's a sin. It's impossible for the spirit to work then. I'm not talking about the gift realm. I'm talking about the inner conscious realm. You hear God. You hear God. Why would not you nurture more your hearing ability in God? Why you don't want to search out what you heard means for your life? Put into practice. Well, that's something else overtake that interest. Someone else overtake that priority. Someone else more important to you. Huh. Very interesting. God is saying something, and He may ask you to do something. You put Him on the end of your agenda? Who is the Lord? I'm giving some young people some admonition here. Who is your Lord? You can't treat the Holy Spirit like that long term. Your life is not out of whack. Amen? Your relation is not out of whack. He will, naturally will. I want you guys to revalidate your life. And young people, many young people, especially younger, old adults, doing a wonderful job. But much to improve, am I right, Still yet to be improved. And I want to tell you something. When you obey the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my life, your life is on fire. Your life is free. You just weariness, confusion, distraction, all gone. Amen, hallelujah. You are like, I was a bad, you know. <laughs> what the Lord want me to do next? <laughs> I'm here, I have some time. <laughs> You're waiting for miracle to show up. It's adventures. You know? <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, literally. I mean, it's, it's, most people, the true free people is led by the spirit of the people is pretty free, man. <laughs> Everything works out for them, and they have absolute clearness that is not them working out. It's God working it up. So that man is truly free. I mean, <laughs> every decision made, he didn't make it. You know? so God made it for him. So he's free from the consequences. And the decision made is a lot, a lot of blessing. God showed up, you know. If we love the Lord, love the word of the Lord. Man, what a wonderful thing, you know. So, amen. I was telling certain people early days. I'm allowing you to live love and passion today. I said, it's like a fisherman, man. You go anywhere, anywhere you can cast the, the, the line into the fish. You catch a fish, man, you will just delight it. You know, a fish catch up, especially, you know. Anywhere you can put out a fish, you know, and catch a fish. That's the Holy Spirit. Anywhere you go, He's with you. He will have work. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. And then your day is now gloomy, dark. Disoriented? What am I going to do? What am I like? Am I alive at any value? Where am I going? By the way, you also learn inner, in your side, you learn to uh, prioritize things as well. You know? <laughs> I don't know. You can put the things in the world pretty on the second tier of your concerns. And you know, God, God will take care of it. Amen? God will take care of it. This is not a, 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 a oh yeah, let's go somewhere, God will provide. No, you are on a continual basis. Have God take care of your life. <laughs> and take care of it. So you don't let the things that are for basic needs of life override what is important for the kingdom of God. You're always acting, I have a time for this brother, I have time for this sister, I want to know what's going on in their life, I want to pray for them. You have a totally different way to engage in things. Let me ask you something. You know, if I want a ride, this is coming right. I can call anyone on the streets to say, give me a ride, some good heart, no good, which I will not do. Amen? Hallelujah. But if I call Ben, Ben, can you give me a ride? I really need a ride. I want you to really make priority for that for me. Ben, you will be most likely to show up, am I? So, amen, hallelujah. Why is that? Why is that? Because the relationship preceded any practical situation of life. Going to think about that. Really true of it. That's how you do life. 
It's a fulfilled life. When when Ben did me a service, <laughs> we'll feel that. You walk away, you don't feel, oh, I'm sorry to bother, am I? You feel, oh, finally I have the chance to help my brother, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, be praying for me. He has uh, invested in my life. I hope uh, that's your thinking, brother, am I? So literally will be your thinking. And, and I'm like, wow, I have to tell my brother, you know, I was, so you're doing something. You're doing something. But it builds relationships. And I'm enlisting some help from my friend. I don't feel as using him <laughs> or have an <a> agenda. <laughs> but my need is men. Men are the best. Not just when on the street, I have to pay some money for it. <laughs> <Joke. laughs> so, well, you can live on anxiety. We need a car, you don't know how to have a car. Or you can live in richness in through relationships, have a thing taken care of you. Now, we as a community begin to start to enjoy this economy. Only the start. And I hope our young people will recognize there are totally different economy in God's kingdom that operate your life. I want to give a give an open door for you guys to glimpse into it. Noah, there are totally different ways to conduct relationships that are all your needs. You need to work hard, you need to just hard responsibility, but you don't need to worry your future. You get me? You don't need to worry about your future. Amen? Your future is not being secured by the land, by the bank account, by whatever plan you think you're going to have. No, your future will be secured by a bundle and the company beautiful relation in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. You have a son's daughters. <laughs> you have <a> students <laughs> and ones that you impact. Thinking about them. I mean, not try to give a, a, a idea. You don't have depend on yourself for your provision. That's my point. But if you never your life, I would call it a mean life, not a mean, in a sense of mean being mean to people, I would call it a small life, a, a very low caliber life. That everything is I had to work for it, plan for it, safeguard for it. That is a worthy man, a nature. Sorry, that's not a, a man of the spirit. That's not a man of God. That's by nature, he is a man of the world. I want to call it out. And I don't want young people, anyone under my influence, to template that life. Amen? Hallelujah. But I may have nothing and nobody. Amen? But I want them to maybe somehow. Receive some inspiration from me. Receive the testimony from me. More importantly, receive the richness of God. He gave to me. Amen. Hallelujah. If I have nothing, I will be silent and <laughs> quiet. But I do think I have something. I will help you to rewire your life differently. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm taking over the time because I think it's necessary to address this spirit in infiltration. If for a long time, it overshadowed God's people. Maybe we were the first being light to cut out this, this doom of engagement and oppression. It's oppressive. Amen, hallelujah. It's oppressive. Amen, hallelujah. No, we're not going to be caged by it. We're not going to serve it. We love to, especially to honor it. Amen? Hallelujah. In the heart, we need to honor God's culture. Invest and be benefited by God's culture. Hallelujah. And we will, he said, he read it upon his disobedience. Said it. Seven said, you are looking only on the surface things. Recently, Brother Justin, I wish I had this morning, I'm thinking about, oh Lord, 
the Lord admonished me and said, you need to tell the, the people that it, they, they need to get it deeper, you know, get deeper. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I didn't intend to do it. I thought it was going to give me another opportunity to do it. And here we are. You are looking only at the surface of things. Just in the vision, I hope you can listen to yourself. Justin, are you there? Can you repeat that vision a little bit? About the digging treasure from the deeper places? From the five, four ministry, I think Tim and some comments to do that. Yeah. We'll share that today. With that, we're going to wrap it up here. Because I think it's very important that vision is very timely for this season. Go ahead, brother, if you're there. Yeah, I, I think the, the vision had started because it, it, it was in two different sections that I got it. The first part of it um, was I thought it was, was you that were there and that there was uh, um, a land a landscape and there was digging in the ground, but it was like the, the ground was like normal ground. It was like gold dust. Mm. And then... Um, you began to just scratch at the surface and then underneath the surface you could see like tons and tons of diamonds mm. um, and then later on that vision expanded to there being I think four other people with all with different tools mm. in hand, um, and all working at the the ground and and just again scratching at it but but each different place had different jewels of different colors mm -hmm. and and during that a vision initially i heard uh, just scratching the surface mm. Mm. Uh, uh, can you identify the two i think you said a pickaxe or something yeah pickaxe there was a pickaxe i'm trying to remember a shovel mm. like a like a rake or a hoe mm. uh, i don't remember exactly all of the right off the top of my head if you can uh, Quiet your mind and give us the the list of the great because I think every tool is an indication if your team understands right about different ministries, the fivefold ministry basically. So if you will. So yeah. So thank you, brother, for sharing that. I want team to and your 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 understand to that and teams then want you to wrap it up here today. So I hear I think you gotta get my message, right? It's high time to depart from the old way to do I found that. some web results. I can show and, them if you uh, ask again from your iPhone. To really come together as God's chosen people to invest, if you will, to build up a new foundation, what it means to a people, individually and as well as the people of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of us, I think, you to hear. He said, I mean, do this church, that church. I hope you drop that past at the door. Your church, whatever is going on, or your personal life going on, should have been not be the starting point for your engagements and new relations here. You must learn. That means what you had is bad or good. It's not the point. The point you should not think the community life here as a minister is a continuation of what you've done in the past. You must recognize there's something different. And identify that difference and your role in it, your call in it. If God says no to you, 11.17, you feel free to disengage. Let God reveal other purpose, other direction to you. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't have the friction or necessary confusion had to develop as if we've done something wrong, you know, in charging ahead with God's given vision. But if God had revealed to you, which you must have, or if you don't have it, the tag along is not good enough. Amen. Hallelujah. You must invest wholeheartedly in this vision. There's no shifting shadows in your understanding in the end of the day. God and us will give you abundant grace as long as you're curious about it. Mm -hmm. But there are points you must understand this is not going to bend to other ways or adapt to other ways and have many heads to tell us what we think. Amen. Hallelujah. God has given us very accurate, I mean, 
repeatedly through the years. Young people are involved in the region. She must study those things, get acquainted with things, especially the commoners. They know what God has for us as the chosen people. That I can tell you that word, the word chosen, is a word much easily <coughs> highlighted in our own mind, especially in the young, the new one's mind. You must know we are chosen. We are chosen. If you don't get that, <coughs> that's the kind of discrimination we can make up for you. You know, we can help you. In the sun. So you must get that yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. And study what that means for yourself. Or else you just sign yourself up into unnecessary struggles with a relationship here, which nobody knows how to help you. I was just speaking to young people, okay? Or new people. And God will absolutely be gracious to you if you didn't seek Him in this regard. He will definitely give you clarity. That is our prayer together, even today. For every soul found clear spiritual revelation of what God wants to do with their life, especially related to this community. Hallelujah. And uh, as we grew together, fortified together, then we can move on to forge a new foundation. Amen? Hallelujah. A new culture, you will. Especially for the young ones. I, I, I sense a lot of Love on settlements, young hearts, young minds, the world, the lot of distraction there. If we don't make ourselves the things clear and, and say it's God, we hardly able to restrain them, not for bad, lack of liberty, but to restrain them from the desire and the being spent by the world to learn to be disciplined and settled in the kingdom of God. Team, why not you go on with that? So that's basically my summary to today's sharing. So. <laughs> I don't really have a lot to add. I, this morning when... Uh, Let me tell me the vision. Can you add on the vision first? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, it was more just an impression mm -hmm. of uh, the reactivation of a certain work. Mm -hmm. uh, of the Lord in the midst of God's people, and mm. yes, specifically with us. Mm. Um, to, I, I think that there was the notion of there being treasure mm. below the surface. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then there were there were five five people digging, mm. and I think there was a directive mm. being given. Mm from someone. And so I think that's where Justin was seeing you initially and others that were working to dig the treasure. Yes. Um, so obviously a lot's been said in relation in, in, in recent history mm. uh, about the fivefold ministry and mm. various operations of that. And very, very few have been willing to step away from the way that man constructs things mm. titles positions and functions yeah. and set all of that aside to, to take a very undiluted or uh, unadulterated view mm. spiritually mm. of certain spiritual operations mm. and I think that's been much of the cause of that's a pretty easy distinction between the religious spirit mm. and its emphasis mm. versus something that is a an eternal ordinance or uh, something that God initiated to always play a certain role mm. or function uh, in the midst of God's people. Mm. And so, Can you specify that more in the word and phrase I don't know how. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know how to do it without oversimplifying it mm. to the extent that it loses its detail. Mm. But Paul, in his recognition mm. 
of what God gave from himself to man in order to enable what he wanted to produce in man to be produced is it's an activation of certain spiritual forces and powers so they fulfill a role and they're independent of personalities although they can operate in a personality and so you know that's again the division there is that the, the spirit of religion and indeed the the antichrist spirit mm. is a replacement of mm. it's a it is an it is an a functional counterfeit mm. and so when we look at that in the sense of these spiritual operations mm. You know, apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, you know, all of those things that were given by God for a very specific purpose. Mm. There are other operational gifts and functions of the spirit, mm. but there are those that were given for for a specific purpose mm. in what they would produce. Yes. And the fivefold <clears throat> operation yes. is that. Yes. It's meant to build instruct mm. form mm. and and I don't want to in the positive sense manipulate mm. so it's God's it's like an extension of God's hand mm. to the pot mm. to shape it and mold it mm. to what it's supposed to be yeah. so but again it's a spiritual operation so mm. the counterfeit the Antichrist, the replacement Christ, mm. the replacement anointing. Mm. So we need to, in that sense, re-settle the definition of Christ, mm. which is an, the anointing. So the anointing is the outflow of the life and power of God. Mm. And so Jesus was the anointed but it's because he was fully joined with the anointing. Mm. And the anointing now is inseparable from him as a son of God, mm -hmm. a mature son. Mm -hmm. But that anointing is not in that sense unique only to him. Mm. The anointing is something that was talked about and there's witness of it all through the scriptures. Mm. But in the former lives, you know, maybe those of the uh, many of the patriarchs and kings and and, and prophets, mm. it had a, it, its function in a different measure because mm. sonship was not fully revealed mm. yet or established, mm. not to the end that God wanted it to fulfill. Mm. And so... Um, but what has always happened is that the religious spirit, the, its operation has always been to take from the fundamental things of God and reorient them to operate and therefore produce something very different. Mm. And that has, as you mentioned earlier, has, has like John sees it and like Daniel saw it, it has risen its head mm. in many various forms mm. through the ages. Mm -hmm. So mm. because it is taking on a new form, a new shape, then it is never, there's never a perception mm. from a given generation mm. that they're dealing with something that's been there for a the long Asians. time. Yeah. Mm. It's always something that is new to them, mm. you know, and therefore not of the past yeah. and put them in a position where they don't, they don't think they're dealing with what, what they're really dealing with. Yeah. And that's just enhance you and distract you from your conversation and continue. I think you said it this morning, you have something on it to record and talk with you about. So, by nature, if we restore the ancient ways, restore the ancient foundation. <clears throat> by nature, in the 
also confront the Asian enemies, <laughs> the Asian tactics that they will use, which is for your life, is what he shared. The so different manifestations, so different ages, the same thing. In the back here, I think about in the Roman Empire, British Empire, now right now, you could call the American Empire, it's also almost under the same kind of construction, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. And we are the citizens of this prevailing culture here today. So, the tragedies, the Christians lend strength to it, and think it's going to endure forever. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't see it as something that it, from ancient times, the same construct, the same spirit has ruled the world, persecuted Christians. Persecute the true sense, you know, drink the blood of what? True believers. It's a sad energy mm -hmm. that of the true believers. So go ahead. Yeah, the, and, and you know, that's referenced in the same context of the woman, the dragon, the desert, mm -hmm. and and he said in Revelation 12 9, mm -hmm. says the dragon the dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil. Mm -hmm. So the relevance of his rearing his head. So what was always the assignment that God gave to man, or not just assignment, but a projected placement mm. would always be the crushing of the enemy's head. Mm. So wherever the enemy rises up, mm. he is to be crushed. Mm. So this, even the, there's this, imagery that's there in Revelation 17 where it describes the various heads mm. that rose up and fell and were broken or crushed but yeah. came back. Yes. Mm. So it, it just opens up to much of another subject about the way that people interpret scripture. I see. But it's because mm. it's completely absent mm. of spiritual of the inside of the spirit. Mm. And the authors and their inspiration from the spirit contained the the divine inspiration of the plan of God mm. throughout. Yeah. So um, that was described. What I was going to say earlier is mm. that when I was uh, even thinking about what to share this morning, mm. I wrote. I just wrote down two questions, mm. and what one question was what makes us different or what sets us apart mm. and the other was that god is doing something new is that right yeah i took over the message of that it's fine it <laughs> it, it, it's i didn't have a message i yeah. just you know the lord yeah. impressed that upon me and what mm. was really fascinating to me mm. is that i was just reading in ezekiel mm. and at one point when the Lord had taken him in the spirit which is exactly what the spirit did here with John mm -hmm. in Revelation yes. because in 17 he says here let me let me show you yeah. the great prostitute mm -hmm. and it says and he was taken in by the spirit to, to see God. something mm -hmm. in Ezekiel's vision it says the very same thing mm -hmm. he was taken by the spirit in fact it says that while he was meeting with the elders of Israel wow. in his own home, oh, wow. that the mighty hand of God came upon him and okay. take him out in the spirit. Yeah. And he said, let me show you what's really happening. Yeah. Let me show you what I see. Yeah. And he showed him many glorious things, but he also showed him some of the very same things that what brought it to my mind again in a very intriguing way was when you referenced the scripture that that in, in I think it's another place in Revelation or somewhere where he says you know the temple has become a place for all kinds of impure things yeah, dwelling place for okay things, yeah. he actually took Ezekiel into the three courts of the temple mm. and he said I want to show you what I see mm. and he said and, and it was all horrible abominations mm. And every time he moved in, he said, I'm going to show you something worse. Mm. I'm going to show you something worse. Mm. 
And he said, you know, I want, and this is kind of crazy too. He said, dig through this hole what? so that you can see into the inner court oh, wow. and, and see what's really happening there. Oh, wow. And the, he said, and inside I saw every unclean thing and all sorts of crawling things and bugs. Oh, wow. And he said, and the elders of Israel were there worshiping. That's the people he met. He's in, sitting in the room. In the room. Yeah. So tried to and then he God. said, yeah. in his vision, yeah. he said he heard uh, this, this man, a, a voice call out, and it says, six men, six angels came mm. by the leading of one who was in white. Mm. And he said, grab your weapons mm. because it's time for the slaughter. Is that right? Oh, wow. And he said, but first I'm going to go and I'm going to put a mark on the heads oh, wow. of those who mourn oh. for how terrible this the is. is. Oh, wow. How that how for those who mourn that that God's house yes. has become disdained yes. in this way. Yes. And only those will be spared from the slaughter. They're going to implode. The thing about the present Christianity is going to implode. They're going to fight each other to the death. And they lost all its influences. I mean, the majority of Christianity is thinking, well, we're, we're pretty okay. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah, they're trying to do the right things. We're, we're, yeah. we're doing okay. Yeah. And what they don't realize is that God is looking for those who who mourn yeah. over the, the transit his the desire yeah. for his people. Man, it's terrible. Think how much have, will be lo lost for God's people. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's sad. So young people, we can share this often with you guys. It seems a heavy message. But that's what we prepare you for. Spiritually speaking. In terms of teaching wise, try to safeguard safeguard from those in rules. Those kind of Christianity trying to book a hook on you. It's dangerous? Oh yeah, it's very dangerous. I mean, I see many refused to be on foot and being pulled into the pit. So you know, it's a spiritual for sure it's a spiritual. The first happen is demonic influences. Mm -hmm. The thinking. Oftentimes a certain kind of pride. As a pride is not informed, yeah there is a different kind of pride. We can you know pride or fortified with the things convicted about God give to you. We can't let it go. Mm -hmm. That's nothing to do with pride, actually. It's, you know, I got something God gave to me. Mm -hmm. I got to do it. I got to invest my life in it. Mm -hmm. I got to be one with it. There's another kind of pride. It doesn't know how any of that. Inside is a void. No, nothing at all. But like a whirlwind, right? To go anywhere, you can distract it. And that's kind of pride. Well, we don't want to embrace that kind of pride. Or passive pride. There's a passive pride, passivity pride. You you have certain people so so miserable, so but the it gives us unction, but you don't know what's right. You walk away from it, they never know what's right or wrong anymore. It's like their emotions, their feelings rule the world. It's like okay, you may don't see anything, but you naturally become the god for the situation. You become the center of attention, a judgment for everything. So you find, man, the more you work with them or live with them or dialogue with them, they fill the whole room with the pressure, with oppressive things. Amen? Hallelujah. You're almost like not free to breathe. Those are demonic things. So demonic things have two ways to manifest to attack God's people. They can be aggressive, they can be passive. 
The difficult ones for Christianity often time is the passive ones. The passive ones are the most dangerous ones. Undetected. <laughs> yeah, undetected. Mm -hmm. I think you have the picture of a hidden snake, I remember, you know, so they come back. Now, we can't have those snakes continue. We have children around, young people around. That's my point. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope you guys are aware of what I'm talking about. <coughs> those things are relentless. You know, Paul said, little yeast part of the whole love. You have one meaning, one action. The spirit begins to start moving. You found why? Well, somebody allows it all the things to roll their day, roll the occasion, and spill the whole meal. So, am I making sense to you? You know, so it's it's very easy to tear down something that you spend a lot of time to build. And certain people just you know, no, not understand, appreciate the building process. It's just good at tearing down. They're gonna go, oh yeah, I don't like this. You know, throw a fist on that. But then people is never can be in trust with a serious leadership or serious influences. I'm speaking of this. It's a common sense. I'm not using mass common sense to tell you. This is kingdom common sense. Leadership common sense. Spirit discernment common sense. No, I will not have that person to be a presiding influence, a spokesperson for what is going on in the meeting, in the community. No, it's obviously it's the option out themselves. The main highlight is one of the one dedicated, faithful, and God anointed to be the sweet person. Is that making sense to you, Noah? Yes. So why we want to choose to affiliate with the one who has the words of the Lord or sympathize with the one who continues struggling in the flesh? That's a choice. You must make a choice. The struggle in the flesh, there's some reason to struggle in the flesh. Amen? Hallelujah. You can't continue to sympathize one refuse to get out of their own pain. I'm sorry. <laughs> ben, I'm not trying to invoke the picture, okay? So it's the same common sense. You know, you must learn to build. When somebody said, lay the stone with me, build this with me. I believe you're wise enough to know where to be enlisted. You must make a choice. In the inner map, nobody condition I must call you out as an open example for everybody. Well, why is man make two choices? By the way, the choices are not be made by our ABCs, all right? Made because God called us to be someone. And we have a mission, we have a calling to discharge. Amen? Hallelujah, to discharge. Amen. Hallelujah. So you must learn to develop relation differently. Hold on a minute. I want to tell you something. You must learn to develop relationship. You want authority? Hang around with people if you charge authority. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to know a father to be a good father? Hang around with people be good fathers. You know. So you want to learn this way to see how people is a coach, is a teacher. You learn how they do things. Now, there's one way that are going to distract you is always natural victimism. You say, hey, you know, they must do something wrong. Teachers are wrong, fairs is wrong, cause is wrong, leader is wrong. You know, sympathize with the ones being disciplined. Sympathize with the one being whatever, oversee. That's okay, you have a common sympathy. But is that the level you're going to continue to be? You know, when God, teacher, God, parents, God, coach, whatever, they are there to help everybody. You know, you can only sympathize with the one who have problem, have trouble, to really make it sense to you. Or you must learn from the ones who is doing it so you can be helping along and then learn from them, establish by them, and then help those in need in a different way, different way. And that's hopefully the God given for, for those experiences around you. That's how God does it, okay? Let me say something to you. That's how God does it. Any other way, either it's illusion or short-sighted, all unproductive.
Because eventually it undermines the will of the Lord. Amen? Undermines it. You may have a good desire, good something, even good intent, but it's a short sight. It's not follow the will of the Lord. Am I making sense to you? You know, so to be a good teacher, you can have a thousand generations of people. Amen? Hallelujah. Making sense to you? But you just tend to one is unbent problematic character all day long. I'm saying that's good work to do. Get it done. Okay, God bless it. You know that certain people need to invest in that. But we must always recognize what we are called for. What are we called for? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you called for to a caretaker? Somebody can help themselves. Or are you called in? Enable many a helper for the Lord, a minister for the Lord. That's a choice. That's a choice. We must make that cut. Can I share some personal testimony with you? This is a very hard lesson for me to learn. I have this street preacher, good friend, and we have some discussion, we have some conflict. So much so that because I Heard from the Lord, clearly told me his way ministry is not, not, not fruitful. I don't understand that because we are presently in your disciples in any West that people really want to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people. I want to learn from him. I wanted to work with him. I want to have a deeper relation with him. Mm -hmm. To his frustration one day, he said, and then I, I remember that they are very passionate discoursing about the way of his ministry. He, he, he obviously was put out with me. He said, Well, br brother, I can't allow you like that. Startled to me. You know, what? What? You know, I thought if I'm going to invest in somebody's life, I will love them. You know, the, the foundation is love, right? So there's no boundary. But then he began, you know, uh, uh, that caught my surprise, you know, make me more quiet up there and began to mute it. <laughs> because I know everything that I proposed to him was uh, a wall off. So I, but I think about it, it's interesting. He is available for everybody. But not available for one like me, want to have a deeper relation with him and deeper, deeper things in the Lord. I was thirsty. I have one time. I want the fellowship. And uh, I said, well, oh, he's an evangelist, maybe, you know, so maybe I don't have time for me. I'm, I'm asking too much. Sorry about that. So I came back to my private quarter and began to ask the Lord, well, am I really asking too much of this gentleman? And God said, no, no, no. You're not asking too much. You ask for the right thing. He is. Uh, seems has you know some, some misunderstanding how discipleship works how relation works I, I, I said that's not my place to even think like that those days I was very young immature unstable I thought I was emotionally get offended or short sighted but then it gave me a crack started crack from that point on to have a Outsiders point of view to look at the ministry. Outside of my relation with him, I respect his with him. As I might observe, my observe, the more observe, <coughs> especially the fruits of people that if the minister goes on years in year out were produced, I found, oh my God, there is no one truly know the Lord. <coughs> or care even truly know the Lord. So I don't understand that. That they have all the time for those people, but don't have time for the truly searching for the Lord. So I said, there's something disconnecting. Is a guilty thing, ministry thing, or something missing? And the Lord began to show to me, from this point on, the important discipleship. You see, the evangelism, the kind of formation in that breed, that wheel of doing street ministry, you know? Treat everybody fair, everybody have equal time, you know? 
is 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 a man-made <laughs> formula <laughs> and a, a religious uh, framework of what it means to 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 allow people to care about people. But that brought it down his best in that framework. He he did not make those up. It's he inherited from somebody else those way of doing things, as I later understood and discussed with him. But I began to discuss later on how the disciples and stuff. He was convicted, very much convicted, and then offered for his ministry, even his personal walk, dry, dead, not hearing God. I was sympathized, you know. I'm not trying to disclose his brother's secrets, but the time happened, then there are other boys come around, literally contaminating our relation. We are not speaking terms at the time. I was seriously troubled by that because that's his dear friend to me. I would do everything for him. And, uh, you know, and uh, so, but I can't yield to this way. The Lord told me to walk away. And, uh, so because then, some, you know, uncomfortable feeling creep in. But to a point that obesity, somehow the Lord took away from an accident. And the elders supposed to, the apostle ministry called me up. I was, I was, I was, I was dumb. I was just like, oh my, I hope I have a time to recover this friendship. And now, um, I don't have the opportunity to do that. So I was, you know, saddened by the news, left with some beautiful wife and beautiful children. I don't know even how to help. So basically I was super burdened. And I was on the ground praying to God and I said, complain to God, why, why I take away this good man, you know? So what's, what's the deal? Am I done anything wrong? The end of his, his unhappy part of the life. I feel so sorry about it, you know? So, a broken friendship. We care each other profoundly, and but we don't greet each other. So, and uh, so I, I was so saddened by that fact that he left with a broken friendship with me. And feel a little bit guilty about it, the most I'm overwhelmingly guilty about it at that moment. And uh, then God called me in half a year. This is something I want to share because this is a turning point for me to begin to study discipleship. And to begin to invalidate the, the evangelical brand of ministries that are prevailing, uh, prevalent in. More Western Christianity makes it too. Yeah. So on the in the region, I was called in half a year. And I was an observer, I was in my own cloud and he him and and the Lord was in another cloud, you know, a below cloud. And uh, but I was observing he he he's like he, he called up in heaven. That's where a few hours I've been passing. So, and um, as the Lord was standing in the cloud, he come to the Lord. You know, just how oh, he's happy to meet the Lord. You know, he said he was a very loving person. You know, work in person. We're outgoing. You know, in in a sense, a little bit private, but most time he meet people is we're outgoing. So he can give it Jesus a big hug, and Jesus. Uh, Step back and say no. But Jesus don't want to hug him. Well, I was surprised. I saw the Lord going to receive him as a faithful, wonderful servant. And Jesus' was face was stern and almost disappointed. So he he, he received him, he didn't do anything, he was surprised, it was like Oh, suddenly become like a child, you know, don't know what he did wrong, go offend the Lord. And uh, and uh, then the Lord, without word, motioned him to look it down from the earth. Let's say, look it down the earth. The Lord showed him, as I see the women, all the feature of the one he ministered to. Mm -hmm. He said, none of that. 
This is the conclusion. I never disclosed this part. It's in my book. Not one of them are in his book. I was start with what that means. Then he pointed to where I was. I was kneeling down praying, obviously. He said, that way is in my book. That's your fruit. And with, to his humiliation, obviously, he's protesting, arguing with the Lord for a while. That's not right. That one, by the way, I don't agree. No, no. What is used for, for that one? And now he don't agree with me. <laughs> Argue a little bit. Then the Lord began to show me my future, my ministry. And then point. he said, well, from this one, many will be saved. I know the word saved is a good word. Just why, but that, you know, you, in which you don't use words. Many will be received by him, brother. Let's see that word. And, and he, was, he was looking at it with startlement and, and, and the disbelief. This could be the case. So I was there as a slave. I was startled and, and disbelief. I thought, what in the world we're talking about? I have no ministry, no disciple, whatever. <laughs> no one. I don't know what my future hold for me those days. But the Lord told me there's many people who touched by, by, by my, my ministry. I had no teaching those days. I don't know inside the Lord. <laughs> but uh, from that point on, I began to dedicate to search out what this means for me at least because it relates to me and I try to examine the kind of evangelism that is uh, this brother you want to call the perfect specimen for that ministry that ministry brother would you not have this any person I was going to say that uh, the other perspective of this man's life mm. from many thousands of people mm would be that if they could identify anyone to be the most Christ-like person they ever knew, it would have been that man. Thousands of people. But he's, he's almost like in their eyes as a scent, you know? Yeah. And scent. Yeah. So I'm not trying to ridicule that brother or anyone familiar with him. It's not my point. My point is trying to highlight a bigger picture. I think it's just to have a very different idea of what Christians is doing. And uh, mm -hmm. we must recognize the discrepancy of the agendas, inspirations, visions of popular Christianity is uh, far removed from Jesus' way and desires. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore we have to also to identify what we are building here is a very unique thing. It takes some hardship to lay the foundation, and we can't afford for young people not aware of this pass over, if you will. We pass over that. We pass over that. We're not going to come back to that. Amen. Yeah. So with that, Tim, why don't you wrap it up for us? Bless us. This today, again, it's not a prophetic message, <coughs> but a, a spiritual terrain survey, if you will, where we are. And uh, we're, we're especially laid before us. I'm so glad for parents to rise up, you know, so for each family come to a different place in terms of family, region, relationship, but much is to be unfolded. And I want to call you guys to pray and to be aware of uh, the challenges we're going to face. Amen? On different venues, personally or relationally. Relationally, we must speak this culture through our relationships. Amen. Hallelujah. Through our relationships, not meetings, not teachings, but the solid, personal, God-given relationships. That's how it's going to work. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. <clears throat>
Lord, we pray that you give us your grace. Lord, we recognize that in us, there is no good thing. So it is our joy to be emptied. so that you might make a habitation in us. And Lord, I pray that it would be our every concern to make room to make way for you. No hidden place, nothing withheld. No room for any other idea. But rather a joyful expansion of our vessel so that you might have a place to dwell and to abide. And Lord, not just in our individual life, but in us as your people. And Lord, may it be a testimony that in the earth, And in the midst of a people, it's possible. That's something that resounds from your ancient desire can have a time and place of fulfillment for your joy and pleasure. And Lord, we can see that it just cannot happen without the acting, working power of your spirit. We need it, Lord. Now more than ever, And so we ask for your spirit of power and grace. Of righteousness and truth. Of inspiration and wisdom. Lord, that we may know, seek and know your counsel in all things for every moment Lord that we might rise above the fray of the world The whirlwind of man's pursuits. The confusion of Babylon. 
must come to an end. It has no place within your borders. You said no unclean thing will walk on that road, neither to harm or destroy. But your house, <laughs> has been desecrated. Your message has been skewed and dishonored. Your servants rejected and cast out. Even so, Lord, we hope that you will find in us a willing heart, not because we are able or having earned We need your living presence with us. As my brother said, don't pass us by. We have nowhere else to go but with you. Help us, Lord. Make a way for us. Strengthen us. Inspire us. Embolden us. For your name's sake. Lord, will you begin to strengthen and solidify your foundations in our hearts and the hearts of our children as that which in the great shaking will not be shaken when everything else falls. You, your kingdom, its foundations will remain. May we be among those who receive the touch of your hand, the mark of your holiness, 
and a name written in your book of life. We do not hold the pen. You alone are the author and the perfecter. So we offer our lives as well as a clean page on which you can write your living word, a living epistle, a living testimony of your will. Bless each one, each family, every young one. Lord, we pray this blessing on the future generations. Yes. That there might be a people who dwell on the earth in whom the inheritance the eternal inheritance can be passed. Lord, uphold us by your mighty right hand and lead and guide us to your glory. We bless you, we praise you, we give you glory and honor. Amen. Amen. Bless you.